Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another session of the Founders Log from Celebrating Act Two. As you well, can see, yes, uh, welcome, uh, John. Uh, you're looking well today. Thank you very much. <laughs> did, did anybody tell you that with this dis social distancing, we don't need the mask? We don't need the mask. Oh, yeah. What? You kidding me? No. I can't believe it. Yeah. Okay. Take can it off. Help? Yeah, take it, take it off. Well, maybe you should have maybe you should leave it on. Ah, what do you mean leave it on? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't couldn't resist that. You know, I was it just, feels better with it off. Yeah, actually, it looked better with it on. <laughs> but thanks a lot. You know, with all this extra traffic on um, uh, Zoom and Skype and yeah, the internet, go to meeting and all, yeah, all yeah, of these. There's things. a little bit of lip sync issue. If you wear that. There'd be no problem. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't know that I'm out of sync, yeah. So, <laughs> so how are you today, John? Well, actually, I'm very good, uh, and I know you're good. We've all been mm. following the rules, speaking of the rules. Right. Rules. I got this in the mail. Did you? And, uh, and as you know, I am uh, I kind of use my own judgment, so I think I'm, uh, I might have missed – I skipped this rule – and I skipped that rule. Okay. But otherwise, I'm doing exactly what the president so, wants me to so, do. So you're following eight of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are the ones that dropped. <laughs> they dropped and broke. Remember the Mel Brooks gag is... Uh, yeah, he uh, comes with uh, 15. Moses got 15 commandments, but he broke the... <laughs> he dropped the third tablet and it broke. He said, okay, Ten Commandments. Right. Yeah. Anyway... Um, we're doing well, and and you know we're semi country. We're beyond suburbs, uh, so we we really don't have uh, any real close uh, interaction with uh, people. But uh, the rules that I don't follow, it's not that that I don't follow them. I'm judicious about going out. I don't I I don't real I don't feel that we have to literally stay in the house 24 hours a day. Um, you're in a different situation. You're in a very small community, tight knit. Yeah. Um, so we go out to the store. We're just careful. If there's a big crowd, we won't go into the store. But uh, every store I've been to has been relatively empty. And people there are very well aware of keeping six feet or more. Uh, for instance, Home Depot, you know, you can roam the aisles and never find any help anyway. Mm. <laughs> so that's not a problem. And when you go to the checkout, they have self-checkout, and they have a lady who but, stays six to eight feet away from you while she helps you. But on that self-checkout, do you bring uh, your your uh, uh, Clorox wipe or whatever you have and wipe the screen off, or you touch it with your meat hook that somebody else has touched? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I touch, it, touch it, and then I go home and wash my hands. Right. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah. we're, we're being cautious. Right. We're following the rules. Um, but I, as you know, I just feel that they, you have to be intelligent about these things. Well, uh, uh, just, just to make you feel a little bit better, even though we are uh, more uh, hunkered down than you are, yes. uh, we still go outside, we have a patio, we live in a, a retirement community, so there's not that much open space around us, but we'll, we'll go for a, a walk. We haven't done that yet, but we will. But the other day, we got in our car, and oh, we, you went out. we ventured you went out. off the compound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we drove about seven miles to watch no, nobody else on the road or virtually nobody else on the road doing traffic times and went yeah. to the post office. Not that we couldn't have left it in the mailbox in front of the house, but we wanted to mail two pieces of mail through the slot. So I didn't, have, you know, in that the box that's out there. So <laughs> we got out and we got to see the world a little bit. Um, but we, you didn't go. You didn't go inside. The post. Not a chance. Not a chance. My wife even told me if we need postage, we can order it by mail. Well, that's uh, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. I know that you go out and you are very careful about it. And you go out at times when there are a lot of other people. Sure. Uh, but, but I'm I, I go to the store or whatever the store might be, and my wife goes to the store maybe two, three times a week tops. Mm -hmm. You know, 
So, so it's so not we've, that we get a lot of exposure. I have to tell you that uh, yesterday uh, I did a shout out on my Facebook feed uh, uh, for Instacart. Uh, we've had three deliveries uh, over the last two and a half. I tried about three weeks ago before we were in uh, uh, hunkering down mode and yeah. just to see how it worked. And it came within two or three days. Uh, and I thought it was only, uh, it, it was married to certain locations and we... Now, is Instacart for groceries or for anything? Uh, it's for, I've only seen groceries, What? Uh, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to post this on the Celebrating Act Two Facebook uh, page. There's a, uh, if you go to Instacart, it shows about uh, 20 or 30 uh, stores that participate. I know the Costco is one of them. Uh, locally, Ralph's Supermarket, all these. Uh, I think Pavilions, Vons Pavilions. Uh, and anyway, they're not just one organization. So once you sign up. Even if you signed up, let's say, through supermarket and you didn't know that you were signing up for all these, it's your email address. If you sign on to uh, Instacart, you can choose any one of them. And so, for instance, now it's about a week out. Uh, we ordered some stuff yesterday from Smart and Final because we have some fa uh, things that we like, uh, especially from from th them. And um, we uh, it, the, the first delivery will be Thursday between noon and 2. And what will happen as it gets closer, you can add more things to your cart. Uh, you can give uh, orders not to substitute. Let's say you have a, a brand that you like and you don't want to substitute uh, the store brand or the other way around. Uh, so you can do that. And if they're out of it, then they, they will automatically pull it out of uh, the order. I will tell you that I got confused and I put in an order for uh, 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 these fabric sheets uh, that you throw into the dryer. Yeah. from Costco and it came and they ordered both the Kirkland brand which we prefer or Bounce because I thought they were out of Kirkland brand so I ordered Bounce and I got them both and they were able to take it um, uh, uh, on their iPhone take a picture of it and it automatically deducted it from my order so I didn't get charged for it wow that's great so and, this is like well, no no, no I'm, like, not, I'm not done yet yeah. and you can oh, order wine me. you can order oh, uh, like, the oh, most I, important thing in, in California uh, you can do that. You, I, I don't think you can do that uh, back east in some states. But uh, then you just have to show your driver's license and then take a picture of that. So they never have to touch your hands. And uh, the, the people are really nice. They're, you know, they're taking a risk. Dri they're driving around in their own civilian cars. But right. they have. Been, we've had, I think, three deliveries. Uh, and it's it's been great. Uh, so we haven't had to go. And my daughter goes out every so often and should Good. pick What's up something. What's the name of it again, Art? I Instacart. I-N-S-T-A-C-A-R-T. I okay. Sure. So dot, this, is, dot com. this is like a Grubhub for delivering restaurants. Yeah. They okay. shop, they shop, and they yeah. deliver. Good. That's great. And they really uh, keep in touch. And I'll put it, again, I'll put it up on the Facebook Celebrating Act 2 page uh, so that it'll be easier for people to understand what they can really choose from. Sure. Good. I, I, you know, it's interesting in times of crises, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs will come up with service uh, businesses like uh, Instacart. And, uh, and let's hope that that continues and grows after our crises pass, uh, go past us and uh, things get better. Other than uh, our uh, daily conversations, uh, do you have any other instances of how technology or uh, alternatives to social distancing uh, well, I has affected to ask your you life? About, uh, my grandkids live right up the hill, so yeah. I see them and I know whether they're ill or not. Um, how about your grandkids? They're not quite uh, as close as mine. Have you seen them at all or are you avoiding them because kids get, you know, pick up every disease that's known to man? Right. And so we have just, well, we have uh, uh, two uh, grown kids that we're in touch with on Facebook all the time. But the two younger ones who are only about six or seven miles away are five and seven. And uh, we've s spoken to them on FaceTime a few times, but we had this great opportunity. Uh, uh, their mom and dad, Mike and Montica, drove them over to our house and double parked in front of our driveway. And we stood 
with the garage door open and we wave to them and they wave to us and and my son Mike uh, dropped something off for us on the hood of our car and I found something in the house that they needed so I uh, put it on the hood of the car and, and we both went there at separate times and we we had a nice uh, uh, about 10 minute visit at least seeing them yeah and sure we, so that so that was a, a we we did it it's a it's a, a a personal visit with a no man's land in between right the hood of the car was no man's land mm. you could drop the package there and take turns getting it anyway yeah. we, we we have a, a similar story um uh, my daughter uh, sarah and her husband brian uh have because they've got the grandkids up the hill right. they're very well aware of uh, you know, the kids particularly picking up uh, the virus. He's working from home now. And um, and what they did is they were feeling, because they've been hunkered in place, what do they call it, shelter in place. Right. They've been following the rules for at least two weeks. Um, what they did is they felt the need to get together with friends. And, of course, all their friends felt the same thing. So they had a, uh, a cocktail party, dinner party. Mm. But they did it online. <laughs> they, they they all got on Zoom at the same time. I don't know, it, two nights ago, I think. And, um, you know, Zoom, you can have 10, 15, 25 people up there. They all put it on the big screen in their TV, feed the computer feed into their TV, right. so they can see, you know, all five couples having dinner, toasting each other, talking simultaneously as we are. So th this online world of streaming has been very beneficial uh, during this time. Well, speaking, speaking about that uh, and how people are uh, adapting, uh, right now as we are uh, taping this uh, uh, segment, my wife is in the other room on a uh, Zoom meeting, and I, I think it's with some of her knitting friends, but I, I know that uh, she's had two or three conferences, uh, some of them lasting an hour or more, where there are things that she had never used Zoom before. Totally wow, new to that's her. Great. That's and, great. And so they're holding those meetings. And even I, uh, and it looks like I'm going to be doing this three times a week, uh, our emeritus teacher who, who teaches a uh, Tai Chi class, uh, which lasts for about two hours. And it's great exercise. And I miss that because I used to go to the gym five days uh, a week, which I'm not doing anymore now at all. Plus, I would practice Tai Chi several times a week down at the beach, uh, at a park in Dana Point, and right. and at the Emeritus class. So they're running them by uh, Zoom, and uh, uh, you, we shut off the cameras so that we don't interfere with her picture being on it. It's one of the limitations of Zoom, and we shut off our mics so that we don't interfere uh, with that. And uh, I just stand there watching it. Uh, so it happens on my computer screen, which is a large screen, but I know a lot of people use it on their iP uh, their tablet, uh, iPad or tablet or uh, yeah. a smartphone. And uh, we, on the practice session, because it doesn't start officially for next week, I think she had 70 people participating wow. with her. Uh, That's great. Via Zoom. How great is yeah. that to be able to have somebody to lead dynamically, keeping you in shape? Yeah, and and we've been very fortunate. This has really worked out well for us in the sense that, um, although I still love getting together with you in person, as I'm sure we will do sometime yeah. soon, um, we, you and I, have been very productive using this uh, this Skype uh, window in interviewing people for Celebrating Act Two. Yeah. I mean, we 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 must have interviewed. Uh, well, we didn't interview all of our regular contributors, but we did talk to John Mariani. Right. And uh, we talked to Dr. Liz and uh, Manny Pacheco. Manny, right. And next week we're going to talk to, or maybe this coming week, we're going to talk to uh, 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 Bill Jordan. Bill Jordan, right. thank you very much. Embrace the boom, Bill Jordan. Wow. Ah. Shameless, uh, shameless puck shameless for you, Bill. Book. So you, yeah. will, you will now sit for interviews. <laughs> he, he will have to. He's uh, obliged now. Right. But So it's been very good for us. We've made good use of it. Um, yeah, I think including this one, uh, John, we've done 13 segments uh, ranging from uh, 8 or 10 to 15 minutes. So, uh, and some of them are really timely for 
the uh, the uh, COVID nineteen situation yes. we're in. Yeah. By the way, everybody, uh, please uh, watch the uh, our YouTube channel, um, YouTube slash YouTube dot com slash Celebrating Act Two with the number because, two with the number two with the number two right. because you're going to see some of these uh, videos that we recorded this week. Um, and some of them are very important, uh, the, uh, particularly the Dr. Liz right. uh, uh, videos, I think, are very important. So you'll see those over the next few weeks. Um, but, you know, it's as as good as we're doing. We're in Southern California, and I think – I don't know how bad Los Angeles is. Lo California is, I think, second in terms of cases to New York. Does that sound about right? Mm. Second, maybe. It, it, it could be and, between and us, and, uh, us and Washington. I think it goes, yeah, New York, California, uh, state of Washington, Washington, Michigan, uh, like that. Um, so I don't, I get the impression, I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, that Los Angeles isn't as bad an area, isn't hit as hard by the hard by the virus as the Bay Area. And of course, by the time the few hours it'll take for us to finish this and put it out, everything <laughs> will all change. <laughs> But um, but New York is is the biggest hotspot. I think they have, and again, I, I don't know if I got this exactly right, but I think they have half of all the cases, yeah. positive cases, Probably. in the U.S. And it's of course that's the New York City area, New York metropolitan uh, area, nor northern New Jersey, southern uh, 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 Connecticut, uh, Long Island, New York City. Right. Um, and of course, our our good friend John Mariani, yeah. our contributing food and travel writer is based in Westchester, which guy. has the second, the number of cases second only to New York City. So Westchester is a hotspot. And uh, uh, if you recall, it, it Westchester is a lower Westchester, New Rochelle, which was completely quarantined. And you you grew up in that area, didn't you? I did. John and I went to school uh, in New Rochelle. So we're, we're very well aware of it. He only lives about 10 miles away from New Rochelle mm. uh, in, uh, I can't remember the name of the town, but in lower Westchester, basically. Um, and I wanted to, wanted to check in with him to see how he's doing. Uh, because after all, we, you know, we, everybody is predicting a spike in the number of cases because it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's part of the thing. But they also are recognizing, they're explaining to us that because we don't have widespread testing, we really don't know the number of negatives. Mm. So we don't have a great comparison, you know? I mean, we just know the number of positives. We don't know the number of negatives. So you don't know what the percentage is that people are uh, being infected by. So there's a lot to learn. There's a lot that sure. we have to worry about. Um, but I wanted to check in with John um, because he is in that, just above that hotspot area. Um, and I know we've got him on the line. John, good to see you. Um, how are you guys dealing with uh, the quarantine? Well, pretty much like everybody else, that I'm, I'm hunkered down. I don't go out of the house except for uh, absolute necessities like going to the pharmacy or the food store. And uh, we all look uh, like every other ghost town in America at this point. Um, I will say that the promising news is that New Rochelle has uh, seen a distinct lessening of uh, the number of cases. Uh, and that's because uh, they've been at it now for three weeks um, and it seems to be working. That's good to hear. Uh, you know, we're on the West Coast and we keep seeing Governor Cuomo and I, we really have no idea how serious it is for most people. What do you hear from friends and family in the area? Um, I know one personal friend who we also went to high school with, a uh, friend Jan, who has it and he and his wife have it. They live in Connecticut. I don't know anybody else who has it, but um, the, the, the New Rochelle yeah. and Westchester, we're kind of spread out. We are a suburb. But in New York, because of, what do we have, 10 million people, 9 million people, um, it's only going to get worse because we just haven't discovered the, uh, the numbers yet. And um, it's going to take a while. People are living close in apartments and go up and down in elevators. And uh, 
the, nobody's getting in taxis anymore, but uh, it's going to take much longer. And the real problem, as Governor Cuomo, who has really shown his stuff in the last week, um, as he said, is being able to get hold of ventilators and equipment and doctors and nurses because it's going to be an explosion. They opened the Javits Center, which is vast convention center, is going to be filled with a thousand beds or something like that. So um, that's the real fear. Up here in Westchester, we'll have more, um, we'll have more um, cases, but uh, it's not going to be anything like the explosion in New York. John, thanks for sharing. Thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to go downstairs. My wife is calling me to soup. Well, John, thanks for uh, that insight, that, re that reporting about what's happening in your area. And um, uh, stay well, stay healthy, you and your family. Thank you again. Yes. And, and everybody, uh, everybody who's watching, please stay well. Follow the rules. Uh, this is getting, it's going to get, it looks like it's getting worse. I'm not sure it's getting worse everywhere because it's not evenly spread around the country. Um, but if you're in an area that has been hit, in fact, even if you're not, follow the rules. Let's let's beat this uh, uh, this disease, and uh, things are going to get better. That's I th think I see it on the horizon. Not everybody agrees, but I think I see things getting better pretty soon. So stay well and follow the rules. And and by the way, uh, yes, to our audience, please stay well. Uh, hopefully, in a couple of days, we'll have another one of these uh, updates for you. But John. Uh, I've gotten a flood of requests to see you in your uh, your mask again because oh. they, they think it really enhances your look. Thank you very Thank much. You. So, Everybody should stay well. Okay? So, yes, yeah, so uh, John, be well, you and Penny and uh, Sarah and the kids. And uh, to everybody in our audience, just stay well, stay distant, but don't be uh, unfriendly. Thank you. <laughs>